Hello friends, welcome to Dr. Sai Physiology Academy, DOPA for short. This is the place where we make the learning of physiology easy, excited and effective. Thank you for joining me. If you're new to this channel, you're especially welcome. And if you love the content that we share, can you click the like button and also the subscribe button and don't forget to turn on notifications so you don't get to miss any new content that we drop. All right, let's get started. So today we're going to be dealing with very, something very vital to physiology, cell physiology. You know, when we're looking at physiology, we look at it from the cellular perspective and also from the systemic perspective, the whole organism how the different parts interact but now we are looking at the cell we are still on the cell and cell signal and communication you will be wondering to yourself so cells communicate how ah, how come how remember on the one of the underlying we talked about introductory lectures seven underlying principles call them seven secrets of physiology okay that one of them states that communication between cells, between tissues, between organs, is necessary for the integration, that's the coordination, okay, of physiological processes. Now, it's, it's very logical. Now, cell, you started from just one cell, and then a lot of multiplication and cell division, trillions, and they started differentiating into different functions structures and shapes so they became so specialized okay to meet those seven aspects okay remember mr niger movement some are dedicated to movement some cells are dedicated to respiration and so on right so that's what has happened but then they are all together to achieve one purpose and whenever you have a large group of people that have a common goal let's write it here common common purpose or goal they will always want to work together because they have something similar so the whole the cells no matter how differentiated and different they may be they mm -hmm. must work together to achieve a common goal of what health survival and you can also add reproduction okay but when you have people working together like that they need what to communicate that's why you have a class of hundreds of people students but they all have similar pursuits they all want to become doctors or nurses and so on so they gather themselves and put themselves in one whatsapp group for what information dissemination and communication is very vital without communication nothing they, they can't happen nothing can happen in the cell physiological processes cannot happen so cells communicate let's establish that now let's try and define cell signaling okay so it is the process and it involves the mechanism the several mechanisms by which cells send out coded information that will elicit a response all right so look at this diagram it's describing something we're going to deal with all of that so this is the cell so the cell that is sending a signal that coded info we're calling it coded information because it's not all cells that will respond the cell sends out information just like i'm talking that the cell talks but not all cells are supposed to respond some will not even understand what that cell is saying that's why it's called signal coded information so now you ask yourself what exactly is the language and the means of communication and how can a cell interpret the information because someone is talking to you you need to first of all understand the language if i'm speaking latin now you can hear me but you cannot understand you cannot act on what i'm saying i might give you a command to switch off the light and you don't understand you will just remain there so the language so the self sense communicates in a chemical way 
that's why you see this thing here chemical messenger okay so the cell communicates it that chemical messenger reaches several other cells but not all the cells respond not all the cells can understand all right so what and what needs to happen for the cell to understand but first of all i'll tell you the language before we talk about the interpretation of that language now the cells communicate through chemical means so the chemical structure the chemical structure is the language the chemical structure of that chemical messenger the structure it is the language that's what it uses to send a specific information and there needs to be another part of the cell that will receive the information the cell that receives the information is called the target cell one two three these three they are what called the target cell so this one is called the inducer cell inducer cell also called signaling cell okay so for the cell to receive the information it needs to be able to fit into the structure so only the cell that fits into the structure that will understand and lead to a response now look at this the structure is like this is just an illustration it's a square this one has a receptor these things here they signify receptors so this one has a receptor that cannot it this thing cannot fit into here this one cannot fit into this receptor is shaped almost like w this one like v v shape but this one has a shape that matches just like a lock and key you carry a key to put inside some a lock that does not match it will not open it so this is the only cell that will respond and what are the responses that cells can undergo when you say it elicits a response we're going to mention them after this break right you're welcome back so i said when we talk about a cell signaling another cell to give for the response let's not be abstract what exactly can another cell respond to when another the inducer cell communicates now just to mention again this chemical messenger usually it has another name it's called a ligand okay it's called a ligand so don't be confused sometimes you hear chemical messengers sometimes you hear ligand okay so the ligand or the chemical messenger interacts with the receptor and depending on whether the receptor matches it that will determine whether there will be a response now what are the kinds of responses one it could be cell division and multiplication okay cell division multiplication so a cell is telling another cell that we need to multiply it, we need to divide that's kind of a response another one too could be differentiation another one could be contraction okay when your muzzle contracts and even some other kinds of muscles smooth muscles you know we talked about effectors when we are dealing with the components of the control system muscles and glands so sometimes it could be smooth muscles the response it wants is that they should contract through the interaction of actin and myosin remember we talked about also the micro filament cytoskeleton those lectures are all there you can watch them all right so it could be contraction sometimes it could even be death wow it could signal to other cells that we need to die <laughs> it happens a lot death but this death is a physiological death it's called a 
apoptosis. That means programmed cell death. That means the death is intentional to achieve a purpose. When too much, we are multiplying too much, it can be harmful. So apoptosis and several other kinds of, of things, growth, okay, and so on. So these are responses that can happen. But now, we're going to talk about types of receptors because in this um, diagram, it's looking as if the receptor has to be at this surface alone. Now, this is just a simplistic diagram for you to understand. Now, we're going to talk about types of receptors. What are the types of receptors? Broadly, there are two types of receptors. I need to really, on, need, it's very important for you to understand because when you are dealing with endocrine physiology, later on, this knowledge is going to help you a lot. Types of receptors. Now, one of them, you have the plasma membrane receptors. And number two, you have the intracellular receptors. Plasma membrane, that's the cell membrane, okay? Plasma membrane is also cell membrane. So that's the one that is illustrated here. So the ligand binds, the receptor is located at the surface of the cell membrane. Why intracellular receptors? The receptor is located inside either this cytoplasm or the nucleus. The receptor is located either in the nucleus or the cell, but it's intracellular. So that's the difference. Now, what, what really differentiates them? That's what is the most important thing you need to know. Look at this now. The cell membrane is a lipid bilayer. Okay? It's, it has a lot of lipid, especially at the center. So, water-soluble substances cannot easily penetrate the cell membrane, except through channels and all of that. So, chemical messengers or ligands that are water-soluble or lipid-insoluble. They are water-soluble, that means they cannot dissolve in lipid. That means they cannot pass through. So they now have to, they now need a receptor that is at the surface. They don't need to go inside. Even if the response they want is from inside the cell. But what happens is that this receptor connects them. These receptors are actually transmembrane. That means it has the side that projects outside and the side that goes in. Okay, so the receptor now acts as a bridge, a connector. So this chemical messenger, because it cannot go in, binds at the receptor outside surface. Then there's now some changes that happen in that receptor that will now lead to the response. And you know that proteins are the structural and functional molecules. So it will connect the other proteins inside, activate them to lead to cellular response. That's what happened, water soluble. Okay, so water soluble ligands. Then the intracellular ones, they are lipid soluble. Lipid, lipid soluble ligands. Okay, they easily penetrate the cell. So when they penetrate the cell, they go straight to the nucleus. And you remember that the nucleus is the origin of protein synthesis. So this is why the other one activates proteins that are already in existence there and all of that. This one starts the synthesis of fresh proteins. They, are, but they still lead to the same outcome, protein, protein new proteins then activating old proteins so that's just the difference okay so it will help you a lot because these ones that are plasma membrane receptors because they need to act they don't have they act fast because the proteins are already prepared it's just to activate them so they act faster than this intracellular receptors that need the process the, the fresh synthesis of proteins so those ones they act slower those kinds of chemical messengers or 
in the case of endocrine phenomenon, we call them hormones. I'm going to be learning that in the part two. The different ways in which they communicate the types of signaling. I'm going to be learning that. And another thing too, we're going to be learning ligand receptor interactions. It will give you an insight into why people who have diabetes, when they urinate, the sugar there to give you insight why some drugs you need to give them in high doses on other drugs they give them in low doses don't miss the part two very important so this one will stop for now the part one of this uh, uh lecture right so we're going to see you in the next lecture